Hello everyone, today we're going to look at the derivative of a power of a function. So we use what's called the chain rule when we're differentiating functions involving compositions. So a composition is a function inside a function, like sine of x squared, or the natural log of 3x minus 4, whenever you have a function of x as opposed to just x inside of some other function. Uh, we always are looking at polynomials or things to powers, so our compositions are going to look like powers of functions. So instead of x to the fourth, we have 3 minus 6x to the fourth. Or instead of the square root of x, we have the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 8. Now what we do is we let u be the inside function, and in this case, the inside function is the function that's being raised to the power. Then what we do is we differentiate y as if u were the variable, then multiply that by the derivative of u. So in function notation, if y equals u to the n, where u is some function of x, so we have a function of x being raised to a power, then the derivative of y, where x is the variable, so dy dx, is equal to dy du, the derivative of y, where u is the variable, times du dx, the derivative of u, where x is the variable. So Leibniz notation is really helpful here because it emphasizes what the variable is. So let's see what this looks like in an actual example. Let's differentiate y equals 2x minus 5 cubed. So u is going to be the function that's being raised to the power. So u is 2x minus 5, and then y is u cubed. So we need dy du. So y equals u cubed. What's the derivative? 3u squared. And then we're going to replace back in what u is. So it's 3 times 2x minus 5 squared. And then we have du dx, so what's the derivative of u? 2. So then y prime is the product of these two derivatives. It's 3 times 2x minus 5 squared, that's dy du, times 3 du, whoops, that's supposed to be a 2, 2 du dx. And then we simplify as best we can, so 6 times 2x minus 5 squared. So remember order of operations. I can't distribute that 6 inside the parentheses because of the power. I would have to do the power first and then multiply by 6, but I'm not going to do that. So we just leave it the way that it is. Let's try another one. We have the cubed root of x squared minus 1. So we're going to let u be the x squared minus 1, the function that's being raised to the power, and u is the cubed root, and sorry, and y is the cubed root of u. And now we need to remember that the cubed root really is a power, and it's to the power of 1 third. So our first step is dy du, which according to the power rule gives us 1 third u to the negative 2 thirds. Again, I'll plug back in what u is. So 1 third times x squared minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds. du dx is 2x. Again, it's the power rule. And then y prime is, again, the product of these two. So we have the 1 third x squared minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds from dy du, and the 2x from du dx. And we get 2 thirds uh, x times x squared minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds. Again, you can't distribute that because of the um, exponent there. Okay, let's try another one. 3 divided by 3x cubed minus 2x to the fourth. So we have a fraction here, so what we have to do is use rules of exponents and bring that fraction, uh, that denominator, up to the numerator. And remember, we do that by making the exponent negative. So 3 divided by something to the fourth becomes 3 times something to the negative fourth. So again, we let u be the inside function. So in this case, 3x cubed minus 2x. 
and u be and sorry y becomes three times u to the negative fourth. dy du power rule negative twelve u to the negative fifth, which again becomes negative twelve times three x cubed minus two x to the negative fifth du dx, also the power rule, 9x squared minus 2. y prime, again just the product of these two things, so negative 12 times 3x cubed minus 2x to the negative fifth times 9x squared minus 2. Depending on the function, these derivatives can get kind of long, so just um, be wary of that. But there's no real simplification we can do here. Um, I could distribute the negative 12 into this part because there's no power, but I cannot distribute it into the 3x cubed minus 2x, again, because of that negative fifth. Um, but really, that's the only thing I could do, and you don't have to do it. So this guy would be a perfectly acceptable answer. Okay, so let's try the chain rule with one of the other rules. So in this case, the quotient rule. So we have 5x minus 2 cubed divided by the square root of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the square root of x to x to the 1 half so that we can use the power rule with it. Now, because we're using the quotient rule also, we're going to have two u's. We're going to have a u with the quotient rule, I wrote product rule, right, quotient rule, and a u associated with the chain rule. So typically what we do is, to avoid confusion, we're going to use w with the chain rule instead. Okay, so u is going to be with the quotient rule, w with the chain rule. So with the quotient rule, u is going to be 5x minus 2 cubed, and v is going to be x to the 1 half. So remember, u is always the numerator, v is always the denominator. du, or, or u rather, is the one that needs the chain rule. So inside of finding the chain rule, we'll let w be 5x minus 2, and u will be w cubed. So now du dw is 3w squared, so the derivative of w cubed. And again, we're going to replace what w is, so 3 times 5x minus 2 squared. dw dx is the derivative of w, which is 5x minus 2, uh, the derivative of which is 5. So du dx is the uh, product of those two, so 3 times 5x minus 2 squared times 5 is going to be 15, 5x minus 2 squared. So continuing with the quotient rule, we found du dx, now we need dv dx, which is just the power rule, so 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Putting this into the quotient rule, we have uh, 15 times 5x minus 2 squared, that's u prime, times, v, uh, times x to the 1 half, that's v minus 1 half x to the negative 1 half, that's v prime, times 5x minus 2 cubed, that's u, divided by x, which is v squared. So we're squaring the square root, they cancel, we're left with just x. Okay. Now, you could possibly simplify this, um, but it's still going to be kind of complicated, so the most that you have to do in this situation is combine any coefficients you might have, uh, which we don't at this point. We've got the 15 and we've got the 1 half, but we don't have any other ones in the same terms. So we don't really um, care about simplifying this anymore. So we're done with this problem. Let's try one with the product rule. So we have x plus 2 times 5 minus x to the fifth. Now one way to solve this is to actually not use the product or the chain rule at all, but to actually do out 5 minus x to the fifth and then multiply by x plus 2. It's a lot longer, it involves a lot of algebra, um, but you could do it. But for the sake of practicing the chain rule, we're going to use the um, product and chain rule. 
So in the product rule, we're going to let u be the x plus 2 and v be the 5 minus x to the 5th. So du dx is 1, and we're going to need the chain rule to find dv dx. And just like before, to avoid any confusion, we're going to let w um, be used instead of u in the chain rule. So w is the inside function, which is 5 minus x, and that makes v w to the 5th. So we differentiate v, so we get 5w to the 4th, plug back in what w is, so 5 times 5 minus x to the 4th, and then um, w, uh, dw dx, so the derivative of w, is negative 1, and then dv dx is again the product of those two. So if I multiply them together, I end up with a negative 5 times 5 minus x to the 4th. Continuing with the product rule, we have 1, which was u prime, v minus x to the fifth, uh, sorry, 5 minus x to the fifth, which is v, plus a negative 5 times 5 minus x to the fourth, which was v prime, and x plus 2, which is u. We'll clean that up. Um, the only thing we can really do is get rid of the 1 and get rid of the plus and negative. Again, I could distribute the 5 into the x plus 2, but there's really no point in doing that, so I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. Okay. So I want you to read through the book and try out some of the problems, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.